Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video I hope we can answer the question that I'm sure has been on everyone's mind for ages and ages and that is can you knurl a taper? Well truth be told probably none of you have ever even considered that. But uh, uh, back during the holidays, uh, previous Christmas, there were some pictures floating around on several of the machinist groups on uh, Facebook of someone that had turned some brass Christmas trees, obviously with a taper, and had a, a neural finish on the taper, or what appeared to be me to be a neural finish. Several people responded back to the post and asked, uh, how the uh, machinist got the uh, texture on the tree instead of just a slick finish. And I never saw any response to, to that. Here's a picture of one of the, uh, or one of the pictures that was floating around, uh, like I say, on several of the machinist groups. I looked at it and thought, well, that, to me, that just looks like a standard knurling. But then the question came to mind, well, how do you knurl a taper? So we're going to look at that today. Uh, what we're going to do is I got a piece of one inch aluminum uh, stock, I don't know, about five or six inches long. We're going to turn a taper on that, about two, two inch taper on it, turn it down to maybe a hundred thousandths on the uh, small end up to the full one inch uh, on the large diameter. We're going to turn that real quickly and then see if we can put a taper on it. Okay, as I've pointed out in numerous videos uh, in the past on my channel, I'm a retired computer programmer. And occasionally, I like to go back to my, uh, what I spent 30 plus year career doing. Um, and that is doing a little programming. This is a, I'm, I know there's a lot of reflection in it right now, but this is a, uh, 10 inch Raspberry Pi touchscreen. There's a case on the back of it that's, that's housing a Raspberry Pi 4 uh, single board computer. This is a touchscreen. All right. What I've done over the last, I don't know, week or so was write a few programs. And these are what I'm calling machinist utility programs. I'll do another video on this program sometime in the future, but it has a, uh, it's really more than a calculator, it's an equation solver. It has metric to imperial converter, decimal to fraction converter, converter, a taper calculator, which we're going to put to use here in just a second, a little routine I put together to, for telling you how, how much travel the compound for an imperial threads per inch or metric pitch, and also this is not a bolt hole pattern. This is for a situation like I've done some videos on in the past. You've got a bolt hole pattern, let's say it's got six holes in it, and you know the diameter is four inches, or you know the distance between the holes, say it's four inches. You could use this calculator to tell you what the diameter is, so you could go to your DRO on your mill and set up for a, uh, set up for a bolt hole pattern. Like I say, I'll, I'll talk about this program more. It's still, it's a little rough right now. Let me pull into the taper calculator a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing. Again, this is a one inch piece of material that we're using. So we'll come up here and say our large diameter is one inch. We'll tab down to the small diameter we're going to just say it's going to be a hundred thousandths. And my compound travel on the lathe has about a two and a half inch travel, but we don't want to push the limits, so we'll just say this is a two, two inch length. Calculate. That says I need to set the compound angle at 12.68 degrees. Twelve and a half degrees I think will be fine. Uh, so let's turn over to the lathe now and get that set up. Okay, this video is not necessarily at all about turning a taper, 
but uh, we need a taper to see if we can figure out how to knurl it. So that said, uh, the little program said 12.68 degrees. I'm going to swing that about 12 and a half is about as good as I can read on that. This is not, the exactness of that angle is not near as crucial doing this as it was during the uh, threading series that we just completed. Okay, I'll put a little turning tool in. And at this part of the process, it really doesn't matter at what angle the uh, tool addresses the workpiece. However, it will make a difference when we get ready to start doing the knurling. So I'm going to set my protractor at exactly 90 degrees. Wow, I got that in pretty close. I want this, I want my tool addressing the workpiece at the same angle that the compound is. All right, let me back the compound up here to our starting point. We'll put our workpiece in. And what I'll do is bring this up. I've got the compound all the way uh, to this extent or to this limit. I'll mark or I'll lock the uh, carriage down right here. And we'll come in. And over here I'm going to I'm going to advance each time about 50 thousandths. That'll be 25 thousandths off each side. And I'm going to continue to cut this taper until we're down to about 100 thousandths down here. It really doesn't matter for the purpose of this video. And I'm not going to worry about trying to end with such a, a real fine finish on here. I'm just I'm going to be turning the compound by hand over here. We're going to knurl it, so it doesn't really matter. Or well, we're going to attempt to knurl it, so it doesn't really matter if this is an extremely smooth finish. Alright, we got us a taper there, and I suspect that's close to a hundred thousandths at the end down here. Again, for the purposes of this video, this really doesn't matter. It's a hundred and thirty thousandths, but that's close enough. And our taper is probably going to be just a little bit short of two inches, yeah. It's about an eighth of an inch short of two inches, so if we took that down a little bit, that would have come out just right with our formula. But the point of this video was to see if we can put a taper on that. Now if we were to take our standard scissors type uh, knurling tool and try to put that on there, that's not going to work because the piece is tapered, obviously, and it's getting larger all the time, which means we'd have to keep backing this off for it to go. So. The scissor type, which for most people I think is the favorite type of uh, knurling tool, it won't work on this. We'll have to go back to the old push type. And this is where I said we wanted the tool addressing the workpiece at the same angle 
that the compound was. Well, that means now that we have a taper on here, our tool is addressing the surface of the workpiece at 90 degrees. It's perpendicular to it. So we're going to bring that in. You, I'm sure you can't see around here, but I'm bringing that in now until it's just touching the workpiece. Then I'm going to clamp down just a little, or not clamp, but I'm going to push in on it just a little bit. And what we're going to do, well, let's see, i got to get my i got to get my compound back in the uh, home position. Now, just like we were advancing the compound to cut the taper, we're going to advance this knurling tool to place a knurl on here. Now, you won't be able to see that knurl until it starts coming out, until our workpiece starts coming out here. I've done several of these. You'll see later in the year uh, where I actually did some Christmas trees. I'm not going to talk much about that right now. But I learned in that process that as you go up here, it will start to get just a little bit tighter on there. So you may see me back this off a couple thousandths at a time as it starts not binding, but as it starts getting a little tighter in. All right, so let's, I got my RPM turned down a little bit. Let's come in now. And then just gradually start feeding in with our compound, just like we were cutting the taper. And again, if I start feeling it getting in much, if any of a bind, I'll just back the cross slide over just all, out just a little bit. The WD-40 on there simply helps to for those chips to to get out of the way or not stick to the knurling wheels. I just realized one of the reasons I think this why it may get a little bit tight as I move up there. The vibration of the lathe is actually dropping that handle down just a little bit. All right, we're knurled to the end now, and I'm simply gonna back off. As you can see, I didn't get it quite to the end here. So we're gonna back off. Keeping our wheels turning all the time on the knurling tool. So folks, we have a knurl on a taper. Simple enough to do. All you need is a push type set at 90 degrees, set perpendicular to your taper. Okay, so hopefully all of you can sleep better tonight knowing that you uh, can knurl a taper and this is one way of doing it. Uh, like I say, I hope you can rest good tonight from that. If you'd like to see how you can turn that taper into a Christmas tree, stick around for just a couple more minutes. But in the meantime, let me say that I'll be getting back to some serious machining and tin born uh, fabrications and that kind of things in the upcoming video. This was just kind of a little filler that um, kind of been on my mind and I thought I'd share it with you. You guys take care, stand by for the Christmas tree, but I'll see you on the next video.